this is Dr. Ariel Waitsman. Today we're going to talk about a real common thing in the ENT world and in medicine in general, and that's use of nasal sprays. There's a lot of misconceptions about nasal sprays, so we're going to try to set the record straight with some basic information today. There are a lot of different types of nasal sprays, and they're used for different reasons. And like always, we should tell you that you should check with your primary doctor or an ENT specialist if you're having any issues because they will guide you appropriately. We'll go over the different categories of the nasal sprays and their appropriate use. The first category is probably one of the most commonly used, and this is a nasal decongestant spray. These sprays are over-the-counter products, and common ones include Afrin, Vixinex, and for our Canadian listeners, Otrevin. These sprays are very popular because they work really well, and one of the problems is they work too well. And they give you a very quick relief from nasal congestion and drainage within usually 10 minutes. These sprays are appropriate for short-term use. That includes when you have a cold or a flu for several days or perhaps an allergy flare-up. What they're not appropriate for is long-term use. There are warnings on the bottles that tell you don't use this more than five days. Those warnings are real. The problem with these sprays is that they can be addictive because they decongest so well and just as important, they can actually damage the lining inside the nose if they're used for too long a time. And when this starts to happen, the spray will become less effective, people will tend to use more of it, and at some point it will just totally stop working and you'll be stuck with a badly stuffed nose that you will not get relief from that has damaged tissue. The next category of spray, which is probably the second most commonly used, is ones like this, which are nasal steroid sprays. There's a lot of different brands, such as Flonase, Nasacort, Nasonex, Rhinocort, and these sprays are all similar. They all use medications that are steroid-based and they're in the same family of drugs. There's also generic versions of these that can either be prescription or over-the-counter as well. The upside of these drugs is that overall they're very safe. They are designed for long-term use and in most patients they can be used for many years without problems. The downside of them is that they take a long time to start working. So in order to get improvement of the congestion or drainage in the nose and sinuses, generally it takes around two weeks to achieve a steady state where you actually feel that the medication is working. The other problem with them is they need to be used fairly regularly. They are not good sprays to use on demand when someone feels stuffy because they do not work quickly. And really to get a proper result you have to use these sprays every day for at least two weeks to get them really started. These sprays are often used for allergies but they can also be used for chronic sinus problems and other inflammatory conditions of the nose. The third category is a nasal antihistamine. So if you can imagine taking something like a Claritin and putting it into a spray form which you shove up your nose, that's what these sprays do. The upside of them is again, they tend to be very safe they have a faster onset than the nasal steroid sprays and usually will have an effect within half an hour. The downside of them is that they don't work instantly like a decongestant and you probably wait about half an hour to get a good effect and they often don't have a very good taste. So we tell people after using them they should brush their teeth, have some gum, etc. to kill some of the drainage that gets into the throat. These sprays work pretty well. Occasionally they do cause people to feel sleepy. So the first few times you use one, you should do so in the evening when you don't have to drive until you know how it affects you. Sometimes these sprays are used in combination with either allergy pills or nasal steroid sprays because the two do have an additive effect that can help people that are more difficult to treat. Another category of spray is what's known as nasal atrovent or ipratronium. This is a very different type of spray and it really doesn't do much for the congestion or stuffiness, 
but it does help drainage and it's designed for people that have frequent thin watery drainage from the nose. This is not allergy and it's not a sinus disease. This is a sensitivity to the nose known as vasomotor rhinitis. And typically it's seen when you're eating spicier hot food or you go from a cold to warm environment or vice versa. It also increases as people age and it's a common complaint in the elderly. This spray does have a good activity in drying up those secretions and will often have people use it intermittently. For instance, if they're going out to eat with friends or they're having a family dinner and they don't want a drippy nose. The downside to it is it can dry the nose excessively and it does have some cardiac issues so people who have significant heart problems should check with their cardiologist before using it. Another category of spray that is used occasionally is something called nasal chromalin. This is a unique category of spray. It's called a mast cell stabilizer. Mast cells are part of our immune response during allergy and they are what release the histamine into our tissues and bloodstream. This spray tries to stabilize those cells so they don't release the histamine during an allergic episode. These sprays are not used that often because they need to be used fairly often, several times a day, and they're not terribly potent. The one upside is that they are generally thought to be safe in pregnancy, unlike the other medicated sprays. So of course, if you are pregnant and you want something for nasal congestion, this would probably be a good choice, but you should check with your obstetrics doctor just to make sure they feel it's safe for you. The last category, but an important category, is saline sprays and washes. Saline is just salt water that is balanced to be the same level of salt that's in our bloodstream and tissues. Using plain water in the nose is an irritant, so all the sprays have a certain amount of salt in them. Saline spray is incredibly safe. It can be used in pregnancy, in children, and in essentially anybody. It has a cleansing action where it helps to keep the nose moist and healthy and remove debris and mucus. It also has some effect on the feeling of congestion and can loosen mucus so you can properly blow your nose and clear out secretions without using too much force. It's not medicated, so it's not going to have as dramatic effect as the other sprays, but can be used completely on demand and is also really helpful just for dryness or nosebleed symptoms. One step further is something like this, which is a saline irrigation. And this is not a spray, it's a wash where distilled water and a pack of salt is put into the bottle and shaken. And it's used to actually wash out the nose. This really does do a great job of removing excessive mucus and reducing congestion, but it takes a bit getting used to because it's a different feeling in the nose, kind of like getting hit by a wave in the ocean. And people have to get used to that sensation. And I tell people when you start the saline washes, do it very gently the first few times. Just get a little in your nose, blow it out. And as you get used to the sensation of the salt water in the nose, you can get more aggressive with the squeezing so it goes in one side and out the other. There are now fancier systems that are mechanical that actually use a pump to push and pull salt water out of the nose. This is essentially the same as the saline wash. It's just a fancier version. It's more expensive. Uh, certainly some patients really like it, but it's unclear if it really holds any advantage over the cheaper version. In fact, some people will make their own salt solution for these and not even buy the over-the-counter packets. Again, there's a lot of different types of nasal sprays. Your doctor can guide you on which one is appropriate for your particular nasal problem. They are not all the same. And some of them have side effects that are important for certain people. So if there's any question, an ENT doctor certainly can guide you through this. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can find us at DearbornENT.com and also our uh, Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also reach us at the office at 313-582-8853. So it's DearbornENT.com. Thanks for watching.